So let's go 10,000 feet up in the air and take a look at migrations, right? So migration is a journey, and the journey always starts with a careful and thorough assessment of the environments you want to move, right? And then you do what we call cloud foundations. Cloud foundations, we mean you start a networking preparations, you do identity management, project and organizational structure, and so on. And then there's this little task of actually moving your workloads into GCP, and then you optimize. When we say optimize, we mean you can reduce costs, you can improve performance, you can leverage managed services or use cloud native technologies, whatever works. So we talked about assessment. Ron mentioned that's the first one. But actually what we want to enable you with is prior to the assessment, before you start deploying an assessment tool and understanding what's in the environment, it's really important to understand what your cloud strategy is. So Google's professional services organization has released something known as the GCAF, which is the Google Cloud Adoption Framework. I recommend everyone download this. It's a white paper. And what it does is it really goes over all of the major key items that you need to focus on as you're looking to take your cloud journey. Everything from culture change to making sure that everyone has the right right skill sets, technologies, and really helping the business define. And I, I usually say when I work with my customers, I bring this usually to the C-suite. We're able to have you know, some very deep discussions. And really, at any level of the organization, it really helps you plan so that when you go into the assessment phase, you're going to get what you're looking for and you have the right strategy from a corporate standpoint. And speaking of assessment phase, let's talk a little bit what's happening during assessment and discovery. So there's enablement and training, right? GCP is a new platform, you might need new tool sets, new skill sets, you might want to do some proof of concepts, you take inventory of applications, workloads, servers, licenses, operating systems, the works. Uh, you start thinking about costs, right? especially if you move from on-prem, it's a different financial model. You do some dependency mappings between the applications and the workloads, and then you start thinking about how you catalog the applications, and which ones you're going to move first to the cloud. And this is an example of one way to catalog applications. So we got applications that are what we call disconnected, meaning they don't have any dependencies, and they're not mission critical, and those are relatively easy. Then you got the ones that have some dependencies, but are still not mission critical, like a back office, gets trickier. And then you've got production workloads, your ERP and your databases and your production apps. And there, they obviously have cross dependencies and they're mission critical. And those get hard or sometimes impossible to move. So when you go through the assessment phase, and you're going to get to learn about uh, the two tools um, that we've partnered with. We talk about characteristics of a good first mover. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight just a few that are critical. So for example, a lot of companies go into this and they say, you know what, if we can move our largest application, that's going to be success. And Companies do this, I don't recommend it. I usually recommend you choose something that's not business critical. There's always a lot of risk when you get started. There's a lot of learning, usually on your side. And you want to make sure you do something that really can be consumed and that you reduce risk. Because at the end of the day, you want to start proving out that cloud's the right move for you, that you really understand how to properly migrate. And that's a good direction to go in. Also to highlight, uh, highlight you don't want to choose edge cases. All right? A lot of customers have that really difficult application, and they'd like to use that. It's not good, and here's why. When you do the first migrations, you want to do something that's repeatable, because everyone in the organization is going to be doing this for the first time. So you want an application that's very representative of what maybe a majority or a good percentage of your applications are. Some other ones to really focus on, I would say, are requiring less app refactoring and requiring less data migration. Because you want to get a quick win. You want to get comfortable with the cloud. Uh, through one of our tools, Velistrata, when you talk about having a lot of data, you don't have to worry about it because the VM comes up in Google Cloud as it streams the data. But still, nonetheless, choose something with a small enough data set so you can really get that win quicker than not. And the last one, just to highlight, is compliance challenges. So I personally have been in situations where a customer says, we have the perfect app, everyone goes forward, and then compliance comes and says, oh, this one's highly regulated, and it takes about eight months to work through compliance. So these are the kinds of questions you want to ask internally as you're working, and also as you work with a Google partner. 
So how do we make this happen? Well, we have four migration partners, Cloud Physics, Stratazone, both of who are here today, and also Risk Networks and Cloudomize. And this is really going to give you the tools to understand deeply what's in your environment from a cost perspective and also from a component perspective, as well as connectivity between those components. So with that being said, I'd like to introduce Chris Grossmeyer from Cloud Physics. Um, so Cloud Physics is really the first step when you get into that level of assessment that you want to make that decision to go to the cloud or not go to the cloud. Uh, at some point, you're going to have to have a marker, an indicator telling you, is this an opportunity? So when we look at the ecosystems of users out there, the platform's a little bit more broad. Um, IT users use this day to day. Our pedigree started as a vSphere administrative tool. Um, great insights into what's going on in the virtual infrastructure, a lot of analytics and right sizing and functionality, really giving you meaningful use as a vSphere admin in the data center. If you're a channel partner, uh, this is really the next level up that we're seeing a lot of activity. This is that trusted advisor, the team or the partner that's coming in and helping you make that intelligent decision to go to the cloud. They come in, they may offer the assessment um, for you, be fully funded. They may offer uh, hardware refresh, right sizing, and other services to help you get there. They're really critical to making sure that that happens. And again, like I said, that trusted advisor and that collaborative intelligence view between the two of you. And ultimately, this third tier also, Google, Intel, um, funding these types of assessment and helping you guys make the right move. Reference architectures, best practices, um, showing services that have been repeatable and usable in the past. Combined, these are all the channel partners and the resources that are sort of bringing these types of assessments to market so you don't have to feel like you're doing this alone. So we have multiple use cases I'm going to talk to real, real quick here. <clears throat> um, getting a view of what's going on inside my data center. Um, is the first part of the platform, but what's nice is once we have performance data and configuration data, we can start doing costing and modeling. Um, one of the core functionalities of the platform allows us to model approximate costs of resources and estimates of how much does our data center cost to operate today. Intelligent meaning of that value is that we can look at it and say, is it going to save us money or cost us more? So this ROI and TCO type analysis. Getting visibility into what's unique about on-premise, the hardware, the resources we're consuming, services and power and things like that. On the cloud side though, changing up the regions, changing uh, storage options, changing sizing options and right sizing, choosing different geographies. We can apply all those different costs and give you approximations between the two resources, as well as other clouds if that were so be in, in the assessment. Um, ignore the bullets here, I'll talk to the image, looks like they got out of, out of sync here. Um, for those of you that have premise, on-premise hardware, uh, visibility into the hardware and the resources is also going to be critical. As you start aging out your old systems, you're running vSphere 6.0 uh, or maybe 5.5, you want to make that migration to vSphere 6.7. There's going to be an opportunity to do some hardware refresh potentially. And what you really want to start is looking at the story that's relevant to this cloud migration. Should I replace this hardware and bring it up to 6.7 and invest those resources? Or is there a cost avoidance by moving to the cloud? And having the intelligence behind the scenes as to the number of resources and what potentially should move is going to be important. The one that's sort of out of order here, uh, that show migration to AWS scenario. We can actually pull in the live feed from that EC2, uh, CloudWatch, your billing resources, and start looking at the cost and the spend on AWS and give you a comparative compar comparison of resources on GCP looking at the instances, identifying which would be the ideal class. Maybe we want to do some right sizing and adjust based on performance, taking some of the waste that we have on the other clouds. As we've seen typically a resource that's deployed, once it's out there, it's very rarely uh, adjusted or right sized, taking those types of intelligence and making that compelling story internally for that cloud migration. And finally, some financial and performance analysis. Um, there's a lot more inside the data center that may have an impact on their decision to move. Storage, for example, storage waste and resources and hardware refresh. Um, licenses and third-party resources in the data center. How efficiently is your team actually managing the data as well? You know, like I said, our pedigree started off as a vSphere admin tool. A lot of the best practices and resources, patching and management. Um, gaining that visibility and understanding how efficiently you actually manage your data center may be important. You may find that you are doing an excellent job and you can actually keep things on premise very efficiently while you do the migration. Or you may find that you are way behind the times. You're not doing support, you're not doing updates, there's a lot of security issues out there. Maybe it's time to move to the cloud and let the cloud providers take on that, that risk for you. 
So architecturally, um, quickly address how this kind of works. Cloud physics is an appliance. We're a single virtual appliance per vCenter um, or a connection into the cloud provider. And what we'll do is we'll collect performance and configuration metadata from the, the resources and bring it to the cloud for analysis. So we are a SaaS-based platform. We will continue to collect that data at the most granular level as possible to us. So for the virtual infrastructure, every 20 seconds, that 20 second granularity is great because we can do a lot of histograms and detailed analysis on that, as well as configuration data. Um, we have a shared portal view of it as well, so once it comes down, the partners and you can work together and collaborate on that data. And we're very non-intrusive. The only thing we need to talk to in the virtual environment is resources like the managers, like a vCenter. Uh, we do not have to touch the hosts. We do not have to touch the guests. We are not using an agent. Everything we do is through directly through the VMware APIs, and they actually do the resource collection for us, so no extra load on the infrastructure. And pulling that data in, since we are only looking pre predominantly at metadata, performance configuration, we don't have to look into the operating system. There's no reason to go in there unless you're doing an application discovery, an application dependency. Um, we, that would be the only reason you'd set up it, but if you're in a high security or highly critical environment, we can restrict that access and just let the appliance do its activity. It takes about five minutes to deploy. It's quick and easy to get going. Uh, once it's up and running, we have data in the portal within 15 minutes. Like I said, we collect that data on that 20 second granularity and we let it keep running. So the duration of your assessment. So if you're doing an assessment today, tomorrow for seven days, we see the highs and lows over the course of that week. We know what the weekend activity is. Nice thing is this appliance can keep running forever. You can use the platform and the portal as a vSphere administrative tool. You can stage your migrations over time, look at trends and usage activity, peaks, 99th and 95th percentiles, means and averages of utilization of all the resources as well. Architecturally, the data that we're collecting predominantly is configuration data for all the resources in the data center, network, storage, compute, um, your uh, clusters and hosts and the details that are there as well in the VMs. And then we collect the performance metadata, um, CPU, memory, bandwidth, storage, I.O., utilizations. We do this for both on-premise and for the cloud side of the activity. Now it's great because once we have this data, we can look at configurations and make recommendations for moving resources from cloud to cloud very quickly. And we can also look at right sizing and performance characteristics. Maybe this resource would be better off on something else. Maybe we can consolidate multiple of these resources down to a single entity, reducing the number of instances in the cloud. All that data comes into us, um, comes in with that 20 second granularity for the virtual environment. Um, everything that we're bringing in is encrypted f to us. It's de de not, or sorry, uh, anonymized. I uh, say de-anonymized, but it's anonymized to us, so all we're looking at is just an org identifier and performance metadata. Uh, no CPU, sorry, uh, no IP addresses and MAC addresses uh, specific to most of the assessments unless that's something you want to enable. Now, uh, for the demo side of it, I'm gonna tell you a little bit what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through, or we're gonna, by default, the partners usually have invited a customer into the platform already, so that first step, you will actually receive an email, you log into the portal, uh, and the first activity you will do is deploy our observer. It's very quick, it's a download as an OVA or OVF, powers it up or set up the connections into your cloud. Uh, if you wanna add other users, that's great. All right, uh, the assessments uh, in the platform, there's hundreds and hundreds of analytics. We ca categorize these things into assessments. And assessments, in this case, this is the GCP and Intel assessment. They've gone through and chose what characteristics that were meaningful for them to put into this review. Um, so as a platform, uh, there's a free edition and there's a premium edition, um, but in the terms of the assessments, all the analytics that are related to the assessment are provided and funded by Google and Intel. What we're gonna have here is in terms of the analytics are individual reports. These are what we break out into our cards. Um, cards like vCenter summary, uh, actually giving us a collaborative view of what resources are currently in our data center. Um, host analysis, what hardware is end of life, what should be refreshed as well as guest operating systems. Really, this really gives us a foundation as that trusted advisor as a partner or for Google to see the resources and make a recommendation as we go. I'm gonna start here with sort of that uh, universal view. And before we actually make the migration to the cloud, it's worth noting, what do we have? Are we looking at one cluster, multiple data centers, multiple uh, campuses, uh, multiple networks and resources? This is really more so for everybody to get into agreement as to what resources are out here. Really just set the tone of, did we actually go out and look at the right environment. Back us up. Host analysis um, offers two functionalities for us. 
Give us an idea of the uh, resources that you have and how you've deployed them. See the hardware. We can identify resources that potentially could be end of life, like we talked about. This opportunity to go through and say, you know what, I've got a large number of servers in my data center, but I'm considering whether or not I should go to 6.7. So let's do a quick look in the infrastructure and find out how many hosts are not compatible with vSphere 6.7, or 6.5 in this case. And I see in this organization there are 46 hosts out there that are not compatible with that release of the hypervisor. Now this is a inflection point for us. Do we decide to replace the hardware and upgrade and buy new hypervisor licenses? Or is this really the opportunity for us to move those infrastructure, that infrastructure to the cloud? So as this works as a narrative for us, we'll go through and, and build this up. Stepping back, find my arrow, there we go. Guest operating, analysis, guest operating system analysis really is the on-premise workload. So when we're looking at either the cloud or we're looking at the virtual infrastructure, these are the resources that you currently have inside the infrastructure that are virtualized and deployed. We see them as they're configured, the resources are consuming. We see the age and, and end of life for some of these operating systems, so maybe there's opportunity to move some of this to a new version of Windows, for example, uh, as well as what aren't going to be candidates for cloud migration. We're going to see things in here like ESX, um, vSphere, running as a nested VM. Maybe we see the Mac OS. We'll go through and clarify and identify resources that are not going to be cloud candidates. Now, most organizations need to start working on a workflow and managing the content. So we break this out to some degree uh, based on all the metrics that are important to you, whether it be clusters or hosts or organizations or logical containers and resources, data stores, security groups, state OS family and such as well as the ability to go through and tag these individually. So I may want to tag a subset of these as production, staging, DevOps. Uh, we do some automatic tagging through the infrastructure. We'll pull tags from vCenter if they already exist. If you are doing uh, application collection, we'll apply the application identity for that VM and start doing some application-based tagging, as well as guest processes. So if you are looking at certain resources inside of the, the resources as well. Now we can use this to tag and manage and down to a minimum subset of resources that might want to move to the cloud. So we can tag individually and see multiple tags. Um, I have a couple of them already out here and we're going to use that in just a second. Try to figure out which monitor is easier to see. Uh, ultimately, uh, before we make the cloud migration, there's a, there's a portion of this that is quick costing. I want to do a quick estimate to find out whether this is a, no, a go or no go. Um, the effort to go through and identify hardware and services, resources in the data center, quantify up for early and figure out is there an opportunity for me to move these resources, takes two parts. What does it cost me on-premise and what is it going to cost me in the cloud? We do some on-premise cost simulations. Um, there's a lot of attributes that you can go through and tune through this as well. But the top level ones, cost of hardware, cost of storage, cost of memory, cost of licensing and support, cost of third-party services, as well as uh, staffing and resources like that, or power and cooling. Um, lots of attributes and variables we'll go through and touch on. But what's nice is as we quantify a total cost of the data center, we'll actually take those and apply that to every one of the workloads. And the end result is for each workload, we'll sort of quantify as a percentage of the entire data set, what is it using uh, in terms of storage and compute and memory? Um, and we'll give you a cost per workload as it is configured. Let's see if I can get my mouse on top of that. I can't see from my angle, there we go. Um, cost of storage, cost of compute, giving an overview. We do some right sizing, we can talk about some cost avoidance, uh, and some summary details of the infrastructure. Now what's nice is that we have all the metrics and all the data that was collected from the infrastructure. All the IOPS, all the throughputs, all the contentions. All that data is known for us behind the scenes, so we can actually go out and do exports and CSV and derivatives or views of other cards to actually give you some more information on your migration. Once we've got our cost, the second part is, what's our cloud, our cloud cost? Costing for the cloud is a little bit easier. Um, choosing a geography, choosing whether we want preemptive, uh, if we want reserved instances, do we want a one-year, two-year commit, three-year commit. Um, storage and geography are going to be the easy ones. But the one that throws people off is this idea of right-sizing. Obviously, every application owner is going to ask for as many resources as possible. If they can get 64 CPUs and a terabyte of RAM, they're going to ask for it whether they need it or not. But ultimately what we're going to see is what was the actual utilization? Where did they peak out in terms of their actual utilization day to day? And was there an opportunity for right sizing that? Uh, how did they perform 99% of the time or 95th percentile? And using those as guidelines, because um, we may see a peak out there at 100%, but it may be very short lived. It could have been a Windows reboot, an update, maybe it was the backup window or something happening inside the OS. 
So going through and letting you drill in and looking at actual metrics for individual resources uh, are available to us. So we can go look at per hour, or per second, see the type of activity that we have had during the day. In this case, a single VM here. Um, can't see, it's hidden here how many CPUs that was. Um, CPU and performance, two CPUs used at one, one and a half CPUs with a performance at its peak. You know, do we right size for that level knowing that that was a one time event or was it something that happened over the course of the day multiple times? And as we start looking over the course of a week or a month and get into lots of detail, we see that, you know, that short lived spike is very short lived universally. It's not something that we're worrying about for our day to day production. As we've gone through the platform, we've gone through and seen the resources, we've seen the hosts, we've seen the VMs. There's that pricing for GCP, we quantified what the cost was. Um, we can also take that live data from the cloud providers. AWS, feed it into the platform and give you that AWS to GCP migration opportunity as well. With the right sizing, the performance and the analytics and the cost. Knowing that a resource was a 3x large on AWS, ends up being a custom sized resource on GCP and we'll tell you specifically what the customization would be. We'll do the direct matching. Our analytics that comes in for the matching, um, we actually update from the APIs directly from Google every day. So we'll match out all the current instances and geographies and costs. So we'll model that resources for you. As well as showing you the option, even for GCP, maybe giving you the option to cut some costs by right sizing down to that 99th percentile, taking several hundred thousand dollars out of your monthly or annual bill. Now again, this is one for one type activity. Um, we do offer a complete view if you have multiple clouds in your assessment, the ability to go through and look at what would be the cost for choosing the same geography, same storage, uh, changing different configurations or attributes. What will it be for those different clouds? Uh, Azure uh, and Hyper-V, AWS, GCP, or on-prem, where is my advantage going to be in my cloud migration? Now, some clarification here, we are looking at the entire data set. Um, what you really want to do is focus this in on a per migration or per resource level and go through and tag those attributes and make an intelligent decision. So we talk about resources that we may have tagged earlier. I have resources that were candidates. And just looking at my subset of resources out there, these are really the only candidates that I tagged. Um, as a whole, uh, saving money from as configured down to that right sizing, taking some slack out of the environment, saving us an additional 300,000 through that process. For the rest of us, if we're not very technical, you're in the sales or you're in a management position, you potentially are gonna come in and say, you know, that was all great and dandy, but I have an architect team to do that. I just want the output. Um, we'll go through and actually generate the reports for that as well. Actually, one item I skipped here. AWS billing, uh, visibility if you do keep content in AWS and you want to go look at the costing. Uh, today we'll show you the exact cost of the resources that you're consuming for bandwidth, inbound, outbound, snapshots, all the sub items there. Uh, and then as well, uh, comparison into GCP. But let's take a time here. Uh, wizards, for those of you that uh, aren't familiar with the cards and don't want to get too much detail into it, we'll guide you through the wizards and generate out those reports. Again, the type of thing that management really wants as a baseline, uh, the type of things that you would typically do for a larger service, these are available to you very quickly. Um, without ever having to have a consultant on site or service engagement, if you've done the deployment of the appliance, this type of visibility is gonna come back to you, allowing you to have the results here within a few days. Ultimately, we recommend going this the full week. We wanna see the peaks, we wanna see weekends. We can run it longer, a full month. And what's nice is the Cloud Physics Observer can be left in the organization and you can run this weekly, monthly, quarterly, and do an annual comparison as you've gone through that migration effort, costing out what's on premise, costing out what's in the cloud. And with that, I'm gonna pass over to Carl. So we're gonna talk a little bit, um, almost uh, as we follow through um, from where Chris left off, we're gonna talk a little bit about Stratazone, the platform itself, what it helps you do. So Stratazone is a purpose-built, born-in-cloud platform designed entirely to take your risk and help you overcome challenges in the cloud migration space or in the process of planning your migration as an organization as well as executing on your migrations. So <clears throat> as we go through this, uh, one of the things you'll see that minimizing risk is a big thing for us, right? So what are the, what are the biggest risks in the cloud migration space? Uh, one of the risks, go to the one of the risks is around 
not knowing your environment. So environment discovery is super important. Uh, very scalable environment discovery helps you get through thousands of workloads in a very short period of time. And most importantly, uh, from there, what it's going to let you do is actually map those workloads globally on a global sync. If you've got uh, data centers in multiple locations, uh, you've got data centers in, in multiple countries, it doesn't matter. Pull everything together. <clears throat> and the other big risk that customers face today is around the requirements. Um, your risks around your requirements um, stem from the fact that a cloud strategy has to be based on your CFO's priorities, your organization's priorities, and most importantly, um, your uh, best way to get the return on investment uh, from, from a cloud strategy. You know, when you put those two things, two things together, one of the things that we do uh, as a platform is <clears throat> we're going to get your consumption velocity moved up. Um, and why do you need your consumption velocity moved up? One of the biggest challenges we've seen over thousands and thousands of workloads being moved to the cloud is that when you're straddling both sides of the fence, you're still part private and you slow down in your consumption into cloud, you are going to end up with an extra cost because you're straddling both sides. Your, your resources have to be doubled up. Your, your facilities have to be doubled up. You can't exactly shut down a data center, so your footprint still remains out there, power cooling, so on and so forth. So there's, there's a lot around the risk factors that, that you have to take into consideration. So our entire goal is to help you accelerate that consumption cycle. So <clears throat> most importantly, what Stratazone does um, outside of the risk mitigation is getting you to understand what goes where and when. Uh, once you get that, you can put a roadmap together very easily. The challenge in getting there is, is if you don't have that, that roadmap, or what we call a consumable roadmap, <clears throat> has to be realistic and consumable, it's the biggest missing piece in most customers' cloud planning. So once you get a cons consumable roadmap, that's what goes where and when, what is the delivery model? What am I consuming with platform as a service? What am I consuming with, with infrastructure as a service? Uh, what stays private? What can move to cloud, right? So basically, we call that the delivery model, how you're going to deliver cloud to your organization, and the implementation model. Are you going to implement cloud across all your assets, or are you going to stay with just a few assets that will end up going into the cloud, right? So. Really having a good grip on that is the biggest priority for most of our customers. Now, of course, the platform will pick for you the best fit products, and then we address the largest risk area. Is the return on investment actually going to be there? Um, am I actually saving money going to cloud? The platform will pick the products for you. It'll load it for you. And most importantly, it's going to give you probably the most powerful pricing engine to go and look at cloud products, compare them to private data center uh, 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 benchmarks, and make sure that you're actually saving money going into cloud. Not every use case may work for you, and those use cases that do work for you, you have to be able to justify that up and sideways in the organization. So what do we do for you there? Um, in the TCO ROI, in the financial space, um, we have a benchmark private data center. It's certified. It avoids you having to pick your own costs for the organization and go find your costs. Um, if you do want to uh, bring your own costs to the table, we can incorporate those and you'll have your own customer data center, which is customized. But either way, we need a left side to compare the right side to, right? We need your private data center costs in order to compare that to the cloud. So when you start looking at how detailed you get in there, we fundamentally can produce the level of CFO business case for you that lets you go up in the organization and make the justification to move to cloud. Now, a lot of times people say it's a no-brainer, push a couple of buttons, you get there. When you start talking to your C-suite and your CFO, the level of detail they want is a, is a lot more complicated. So our business cases handle things like depreciation cycles, um, you know, fixed costs, uh, sunk costs, so on and so forth. So just being prepared with that is important. And then the other, like I said, the big important thing here about, about making sure you know what you're doing is a consumable roadmap. That consumable roadmap has to have small enough pieces that can be executed and can be executed in a successful manner. As Tad was saying earlier, you want to pick success stories and then build on those success stories as your organization morphs into cloud. Um, and that's what the consumable roadmap is designed to do. Start out with small successes and move to the next steps. And then the last thing here, a predictable migration cost. That's one of the biggest shortcomings of cloud migration plans. Planning's great. When you go to migrate, you don't know what those costs are, and it can mess up your, your return on investment. And then at that point, your accountability is uh, sort of questioned around the whole strategy. So on a technical level, uh, for those who are technical here, you know this is a 10,000-foot view. Uh, inventory analysis down to the performance, uh, capacity, percentiles, all the usual things you'd expect that anybody would require in order to make um, a, a good, sound decision on how you're going to consume cloud. 
requirements definition, most importantly, cloud fit analysis. A very quick ability to see what's a good fit for cloud, uh, what's not a good fit, what your remediation requirements are, and how much work you're going to have to do to get those workloads or those applications into the cloud. Right? Application mapping and dependency mapping, two of the most uh, important risk areas that everybody runs into, not necessarily on day one, but down the road. So that's one of the other capabilities around the platform is to be able to do very accurate application and dependency mapping. And one of the big ones I like to point out, um, over thousands and thousands of workloads, we found out that about 32% of our, our customers' assets are essentially being kept on or the lights are on for the purposes of, of archive. Um, customers don't know what to do with it. They can get rid of it. So a data estate analysis lets you take those expensive archive, uh, archive type assets and put those into cold or warm storage, uh, which is probably about, we calculated out about a 50th of the cost of running a data center space to keep, those, keep that data in place, right? So one of the things uh, uh, we've done as well, we looked at the speed to which the Stratazone platform helps you get, get to your decisioning points. Um, our business case runs about three to five days uh, once you do data discovery, and we'll talk about that in a second. And our entire plan is usually done in about four to five weeks. That is all the way to what's called a trigger-ready state, including application mapping and all of the pieces that go with that, uh, including a migration runbook that you would need in order to get from point A to point B. So how do you get started? Um, again, to, to a pointer from earlier, Google has licensed the platform, so it's available to customers for free. Um, you fill up a form. The form asks you to tell us about your data center environments. Those environments uh, are important because we'd like to know how you want your data rolled up. So once you fill in that form, it'll workflow to you a series of data collectors that are uniquely numbered and tagged. And what those data collectors do is that they report into the platform with the way you want to see your data. So it could be EMEA, you know, North America, Data Center 1, Data Center 2, it doesn't matter. We pre-tag data, it's very important for us, very important for you because the level of automation gives you reports starting the next morning, right? You're going to start seeing reports come in, and we'd like to see them tagged the way you want to see them. So 30 minutes to install a data collector. You can start looking at results in a couple of hours. We like to do at least one day of, of, of data polls. Um, the longer you let it run, the better the data looks, right? And the most important thing here is that, let's say you're a retailer, and you have something that you want to check in November, or you have an end-of-month process, you can schedule the data collectors to kick off again uh, at the end of the month or end of the week or whenever that, whenever that peak anticipated peak period is going to be. So that is the extent of the work you do to, to start um, uh, doing an assessment in your environment. Right? It's 30 minutes per collector. You install it. You let it run. After that, you're pretty much working on all your data and getting all of the advanced deliverables that we can produce for you. So what I'd like to do is <coughs> talk a little bit for a second about security. It is a SaaS platform. Uh, all of the data we're collecting is entirely metadata related. It's not application data, not user data, nothing that falls under any regulatory requirements. So there's no issues around uh, you know, HIPAA or anything from that perspective. And most importantly, we have that conversation with your CISOs, your, your security folks, if they want to ask questions. There's a security white paper that's available to them. Talks about every field we collect. And what's really neat is that they can inspect the actual JSON files before they're transmitted into their portal. So you can see every single field we're collecting and validate that what we said we're collecting is what you're seeing being transmitted. And Everything's encrypted in transit, encrypted at rest, all the usual things that you would typically expect. But on top of all of that, what we have is the ability to custom anonymize. So if a specific customer says, I don't want my IP addresses going into your cloud, your 192 range is the same as my 192 range, but let's say you don't want it in the cloud, um, you can actually select the degree of anonymization that you'd like to see um, in the platform, right? So you can go all the way to every piece of identifiable data being removed, or you can just have a couple of things removed. Rarely happens, but the, the features and capabilities are there. So last but not least, um, once you've done all that great planning, uh, Stratazone as a platform goes from end to end. We're going to help you with your, your, uh, uh, your business case, your data analysis. We're going to help you put all of your plan together, build roadmaps. And we'll talk about roadmaps in a second. Once you've built all of that, you really need to leverage that in your migration plan. One of the biggest downfalls <coughs> of, um, of migration plans is that a great plan was done, but then the migration plan ends up being done by a different team, different party, and it's completely different. So here, we actually carry all of your planning and, and leverage your investment in the previous work you did into the actual migration process. And we integrate with Vila Strata for GCP, and it'll automatically put, build that runbook for you and actually move the assets into GCP when you're looking at doing a VM migration. 
So uh, it's a very smooth process. Uh, you get a single pane of glass to control your entire migration process. And what happens there is that the business units that you work with are also, um, um, you know, at the end of the day, their process becomes uh, smoother. And so they're, they're more likely to participate when you can show them that you have an organized way of, of getting their assets migrated into the cloud. Here's a, a quick example of, uh, of uh, a process we went through. Our partner, Mavenwave, uh, customer eHarmony, uh, started uh, data collection of uh, roughly 3,000 assets on, on a Friday. The whole business case was ready, presented on, on a Wednesday, right? So you, you've got a lot of analytics that go around the business case, and you can get to see all of those details from dependency mapping, um, uh, the business case at the executive level, the fully loaded TCROI. So it really is not just a compute storage and memory kind of business case, it is a fully loaded business case, including the cost of transition. And, and that's what the platform will produce in, in literally 24 hours to three days, depending on how long you want, it, you want to let the data run. So at this point, we're gonna jump into the platform real quick and do a, uh, um, and do a demo. So Stratazone as a platform um, is, let me reduce that, um, Size there a little bit. It's a SaaS platform. What you see as a customer is what your partners see and is also what your deployment folks see. It's, it's completely transparent. Um, pricing engine is completely transparent. Everything's available to you. Kicking off an assessment is very easy. It's basically a quick form that you kick off once you get access. You do an automated uh, dis asset discovery and all we need is who, who, we who we're gonna email that one to, right? So assessments in general, you can have multiple assessments globally. You can pull all this data together. Um, it does all of that global sync for you, but we'd like to know where your data is coming from. That's why you see multiple assessments globally in multiple locations. Once you deploy those data collectors, that's the end of any work you do as a customer um, or as a partner. Everything comes into the platform. It's maintained here, and you can, you can sort and filter through your different areas. But most importantly, what we're capturing, this module, by the way, runs entirely on its own. What we're capturing for you is we're getting all of your performance stats. We're profiling your assets. If you notice as they come in, um, you'll see here you've got all of your, your IOPS and, and, your, and your performance metrics. Everything that's important to you to, to do your right sizing and your pricing. And we'll talk about that in a second, but our optimization engine is extremely sophisticated. We call it the truth serum. A lot of our customers will go to cloud, they'll come back and say, I use the TCO calculator, cloud's more expensive my, than my data center. Once they go through this platform, we've challenged every assumption and we've fed them a very realistic data center cost from our benchmark data center, and we can actually prove a very, very solid business case around it. So again, all your data is coming in. All those things you see on the left, the, the usual suspects, CPU utilization, memory utilization, all of that's coming to the platform. We've processed your dependencies, but more importantly, at this early stage, these are day two reports, by the way, um, at this early stage, you can come in here and see what gets a high, medium, and a low scoring for the cloud. And your first question is gonna be, well, why did I get a high, medium, or a low? And it, it actually creates your remediation plan and shows you with, with multiple reasons, like your credit report, why you got a high, medium, or a low. Right? So if you, if you look through this process, every single thing has been scored for you automatically. And you can actually give the system some priorities and say, this is important to me, that's not important to me. Uh, it's not important that I, I'm able to exit the cloud or, or I don't want my high performance compute assets going to the cloud. So once you do this, your scoring actually changes. But the whole idea here is based on your priorities, we're giving you a very, very solid machine-based score that shows you with the underlying reasons why you're a good fit uh, for the cloud or you're not. And at this point, there's lots of reports available. This is what we call our, 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 day, two, our day two reports. Um, you've got all your detailed reports that the data center folks would like. There's a bunch of executive reports, but you can actually come in here. The platform's automatically right-sized you and done all the optimization. You can come in here and pick your different locations and generate a ROI calculation right off the bat. Um, uh, basically an ROI, a savings calculation, and you can pick one or more uh, uh, product catalogs that you want to see it from. Now, typically we make the other catalogs available in the Google ecosystem, so you, wanna, you, wanna, you may want to actually see what your comparative cost looks like, right? But it's, it's all real-time catalogs, and they will present you with the results um, that you can actually take to your leadership and walk the cloud plan around. And to show you really quick what that cloud plan looks like, it is going to be a... a uh, executive level presentation that talks about what we did for the assessment, what we looked at at a high level, and what we found. I'll skip right to the bottom line. Ultimately, it's going to get down to an explanation of how we did your financial costing and a business case to start the conversation about moving to cloud. This is available the next morning, right? 
Uh, we'd like to have 24 hours of data, but you can pull it in three hours, but it's available the next morning. So you've got a business case, you've got a very solid determination, and this is based on reality data underlying this, performance, capacity, and an actual real-time uh, uh, catalog comparison. So from here, I'd like to show you a little bit more sophisticated functionality. We won't hit too much on it. Um, I've got four minutes left. So one of the big things here, we have a very, very sophisticated approach to doing machine shaping. And that is um, your, your paradigm today of buying hardware and, 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 and you know, resourcing a data center is based on capacity. The paradigm in the future is based on elasticity, right? Um, you, you've got the ability to, to scale up and down as you see fit. So you need to change how you sh you're gonna think. Uh, again, speaking of the truth serum, once we go through this, you're gonna be able to take out all of the inefficiency in your current environment and then see what your real cloud, cloud costs are going to be. That's, that's really important because if you do a one-to-one -one match, you're simply taking your inefficiency into the cloud, right? So this, this um, uh, machine shaping panel, we do it, a lot of the, the GCP ecosystem partners will do it for you, but ultimately it's going to let you shape your life in the cloud. Very important. From here, you'll see that the, the pricing engine will give you the ability to go through and really do some detailed analysis, right? So if you're looking here on, uh, on um, uh, the different uh, pricing engines, um, I'm gonna be able to go in and see exactly what it picked for me and how it meters to what I have on-prem today. And it's full disclosure, so you're gonna see every single costing factor that built up that pricing, including how many hours we're buying for you if it's an on-demand catalog. And you've got the ability to look at the, the committed use catalogs, it's got all the sustained use uh, 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 capabilities built in, all the discountings built in. You can get custom discounting if you're a large customer that needs it. But at the end of the day, you, you're able to come in here and do a very realistic assessment of what your world looks like from comparing the private data center benchmark or your data into any of the GCP catalogs, for example, to see your savings, right? Very quick, and this is based on actual real information from your assets under, underlying the platform. And then here you'll see one of the most important things customers really like about the platform it is gives you the ability to go in and look at your dependency maps. Um, it's processed your dependencies for you. It's gonna throw these dependencies up on a screen. It's cleaning them for you. It's taking out the data center noise. And when I blow this up, you'll see that it's actually telling you how all your assets communicate with each other, right? This is cleansed. So it's taking out your AD, DNS noise, all this stuff that's your usual monitoring stuff from your data center. And what it's got for you is a very clean dependency map. This is a business service somehow tied together. So you cannot break this map when you migrate. This is the biggest risk area in, in a customer transition to cloud. How am I gonna break my dependencies? I don't even know my dependencies. So first, understanding your dependencies, knowing what you're doing with them, and seeing whether or not you're gonna break those dependencies. And at the end of the cycle, um, you're able to build out a roadmap. The roadmap is probably the most important thing here. We will deliver a consumable cloud roadmap. What that means, it's gonna have multiple roadmaps, multiple waves, and you can come in here and say pretty much anything you want to the platform. You can come in here and say, show me everything that's the dev version of my ERP application that has an asset age over so many years, right? Um, and by the way, belongs on a certain subnet and, and has a server role of dev or anything you want. You can say, show me my Windows 2003 that's gonna go into a, 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 a end of life wave. So once you build your roadmap, you can figure out how to empty out that entire data center and actually get to you can move things around to get to that return on investment the way you want to see it from a financial perspective and not make this a data center exercise. So with that, I'll stop here and, and uh, pass the mic back. So in closing, how do we, how does Google actually help you succeed? And most importantly, at no additional cost, and this was mentioned. So through our partnership, through Cloud Physics and Stratazone, you can actually partner with us and we will pay for this assessment so Cloud Physics and Stratazone can actually deliver it on site. You can do it yourselves, you can leverage one of our partners, but the licensing is fully covered by Google so you can actually get started right away getting visibility into your environment, making a strong business case. Sometimes it's not even that, sometimes it's just verifying the business case to see if what you did previously is the right way to go. And one of the great parts that was mentioned too is allowing these tools to run. Uh, when I was a customer, I would let these tools run, you know, sometimes around, uh, I'd say end of month when we're running our quarterly reports, and it really helped a lot with our capacity planning. So it's more than just right now, it's also in the future to have these tools running, giving you the right visibility. So in closing, I like to say it's easy as one, two, three. 
Um, with that being said, as you remember, we talked about the GCAF first, which is Google Cloud's adoption framework. It's a white paper. I recommend everyone download that to take a look and have a talk within your company about these things. You're going to get a solid understanding of where you currently are and also the action items that are going to be needed for next steps to migrate to the cloud or really to any environment as you move forward on your journey. After you understand the GCAF, you have your strategy in place, then engage Google, engage Stratazone, Cloud Physics, let us come in, help you with a no-cost assessment, leveraging these best-of-breed tools to really get you the insight you need. And then finally, you actually can leverage that insight to deploy and to migrate. So as you might have seen, the products directly integrate with Velostrata, which is our migration tool. So you can go from understanding your ROI, TCO, to putting together move groups, understanding how everything's connected, and then ingesting that directly into the migration tool to get into Google Cloud. And then from there, you can optimize, maybe go into Kubernetes, and take it to the next level.